Uh, now I want to talk about the hygiene for dishes. So, okay, here's another thing you're gonna think, oh my God, he's destroying the environment. Paper plates, paper cups, plastic utensils. I'm sorry, and for a three day sort of situation, the risk of food poisoning when you don't have uh, ready access to medical type services can be really dangerous. So in the case of that, I'm going to go, I have my stash of plastic disposable uh, dishes, uh, or paper dishes. So at least that, you know, I can put it in the compost, but the plastic silverware and uh, one-time use and, you know, away it goes as I just, I'm going to protect my family. It's as simple as that. Um, hate me, leave me, so be it. I'm protecting my family. And one of the ways to do that is prevent them from getting food poisoning in a grid down situation. Plus, usually there's all sorts of other stuff going on and just taking the time to carefully wash the things, uh, it's, it's, you know, balance. Okay, that being said, there are certain like pots and things that you will end up having to cook. And so for that, I use what's called, it's called the three tub method, where you have three tubs. The first one is soapy water. The second one is just clear, clean, hot water. And the third one is a sterilizing solution, usually made of bleach. And in the information I put up there, I actually listed each one. So the soapy water, you know, just a little bit of Dawn dishwasher detergent. Ideally though, you want some sort of like earth-friendly camping type soap because if, especially if the sewer systems are blocked up or there's things like that, and you have to just dispose of the water outdoors, you want some sort of biodegradable soap for that. I mean, ideally that's what you have in your kitchen, but that gets expensive. But a little bit of, you know, you can buy in Academy little, little three ounce bottles of biodegradable camp soap, just a few drops in the first tub. And that's where, you, well, you know, first you, you wipe as much food and gunk off the, the pan or the plate or whatever you can. Put it in the soapy water, scrub it, get all the gunk off there, swish it around, try and, you know, shake the soapy water off it, get as much soap, you know, wipe it off. And then you put it in the clean water and swish it around in the, the clean water, the rinse water to get the last bits of soap off there. This uh, rinse water ideally should be about 120 degrees. So basically just as hot as you can handle it with your hands just to help kill any bacteria. And then the third, after you take it out of that, shake it, you know, get the water off, put it in the third tub, which has a bleach solution. And then the bleach solution will finish sterilizing anything in there. The ratio of concentrated Clorox bleach to water is two teaspoons of concentrated Clorox bleach or, you know, store brand, but concentrated bleach in one gallon of water. Two teaspoons of bleach in one gallon of water. And that will give you the proper amount of disinfecting power. So then you, you rinse your dishes and that, you, you know, squish them around, drop them in there. They only have to be in there for like 30 seconds. Take it out, shake it. You want to get that bleach solution back in there and just set it aside to air dry somewhere. <clears throat> and that is pretty much all you need to do to clean and sterilize your dishes. So if you're willing to do that, then go ahead and get the silverware and everything else too. Um, if possible, if you really want to go high tech, you get a tubs with lids on them. So you can at least reuse the soapy water some, unless it's really filled with gunk, and the bleach one. Uh, with the bleach one, what I recommend if after you've washed your dishes um, and you know taken care of it, sterilized it, uh, if you have a tub with a lid on it, that helps seal in the bleach and keeps it trapped in the water so it doesn't evaporate out. And then as long as you can really smell a strong bleach smell from that tub, it's still okay. Um, if you want, if you're doing a lot of dishes, like if you've just finished a lot of dishes, um, you may want to add another teaspoon of bleach before you wash the next batch. But from like a, a family of four type people, the sort of dishes you would have in a grid down cooking, the two, te two teaspoons of bleach in one gallon of water or per one gallon of water. 
should last you easily for that meal and probably the next one too. Um, like I said, it really depends on how much splashing and stuff like that you did. But first tub is just soapy water. Second tub is hot, clean water for rinsing the soap off. And third tub is the 30 second bleach soak to sterilize it and then let it air dry. And that should prevent or go a long ways towards preventing any sort of foodborne illness or E. coli sort of thing. Now, I am assuming throughout the day you are washing your hands or at least before eating or anything like that. Um, you want to be washing your hands or you know even you know use a hand sanitizer or something before you eat just to you know also minimize the chance of food poisoning or E. coli or something like that. All right, quick check here. Yeah, goes in the recycling bin. Um, five gallon food grade buckets, always a good thing. Uh, Dawn actually is biodegradable, but slowly. They make special soaps. Um, I think a lot of the special soaps are, I mean, they work. They're biodegradable, they're fast, but they are definitely uh, designed to appeal to a certain type of person. Um, so, you know, there's that. Oh yeah, uh, Curtis uh, uh, Murphy, Cody London has a great book on this subject. Yeah, uh, Keeping Your Ass Alive. Is that the, or no, When All Hell Breaks Loose. Excellent, excellent book. Okay, uh, Kevin, how long does the bleach stay good? Uh, usually, like each day, make a fresh batch if you're going to do dishes. Um, but so, like for a family of four, at least two meals uh, worth of dishes, you know, the uh, a pot, some cooking utensils, some spoons, maybe even a, a bowl or a plate, uh, it'll be fine for that. As long as you can smell uh, a fairly strong, it should smell more bleachy than a swimming pool. So use, you know, if you have memories of the, you know, chlorine at a swimming pool, it should be slightly stronger chlorine smell than your average swimming pool to do the true disinfectant. So if it starts to smell less than that, throw another teaspoon in and call it good. Or you know, dump that water out and start over with fresh. Yeah, actually, Curtis, so one thing you can do, uh, I hopefully most people know this, but uh, if the water gets shut off, and so if you flush your toilet and nothing happens, you can physically pour water into the bowl, and once you get to a certain point, it will flush itself automatically. It's, it's just laws of physics siphoning sort of thing. So you can still pour your wash water into the toilet. And once it gets up to a certain point, it will you know, do its toilet thing. So that's really good stuff there. Um, yeah, uh, the pool shock, that's another good thing. Uh, I, I find most people usually have a, a, a bottle of bleach somewhere in the house. Oh, something to keep in mind that bleach, once the bottle is opened, it has a fairly short lifespan. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember what it is. Uh, one thing I do is with a Sharpie, I write. If you know, Whenever I open a new bottle of bleach, I write the date I opened it. And I think it's like four or six weeks afterwards, it, it's basically considered to have lost too much bleach to be good. The pool shock stuff is really good. And that is a solid uh, particle type stuff um, that stores really easy. The interesting thing about the pool shock stuff is it can be somewhat flammable. So something to keep in mind there. Uh, yeah, so as long as it's sealed, it still has like a three-year lifespan, but once it's opened, it's relatively short. I don't remember the exact lifespan, but it's one, something you can Google uh, or even the Clorox. The, the Clorox website has all sorts of information on using Clorox to uh, purify water for drinking or, you know, clean sterilizing things after a flood or all that sort of thing. And that's where it says how long it's good for once you open the bottle. Yes, Curtis, also the hot water tank. If you, you know, there's still water up in your hot water tank. I'm pointing up because our hot water heater is up in our attic. And in the 20 years we've been in the house now, twice it has burst a leak and... Uh, the last time I didn't even bother to fix the ceiling. We just have an open hole in the ceiling. So, um, you know, one of these days I'll get to what's the saying, you know, you know, you don't have to keep nagging a guy to fix something, you know, once a year is plenty. Just remind him once a year and eventually he'll get to it. Um, so yeah, there's that. 
but the hot water heaters, even with the water is shut off, there's still water in that. Um, especially if it's in a two-story house with the hot water heater up high, uh, what you need to do is open a faucet on the second story to break the vacuum that forms. And then the faucets on the first floor, the water will still run. So for a while until the hot water heater is drained. Okay, so yeah. So we've covered water, we've covered food, we've covered cleaning up after food. The next thing I want to talk about are medications.